So, Nathan. Yes, Brandon? This month is Listener's Choice. It is. I still say this is a bad idea. Well, you are a bit of a naysayer. You're a bit of a negative Nancy. I, I'm actually... I'm more of a realistic Robert. Thank you. <laughs> well, speaking of Robert... Yeah. See that? Same way? I see what you did there. Yeah, that's, that's clever. Our first uh, movie this week, this month, is from Robert Hooper. Oh, and... I know Rob. Yeah. Robert yeah. Hooper. Jolly yeah. old Robert. And we didn't get him... We... We uh, were trying to get an audio recording from him just to kind of explain why he uh, chose chose this movie, mm-hmm. and just got it last minute. Just oh, because it... I, yeah, I heard you were trying to get you had a hard time getting a hold of him. Yeah, no, I ju- I just got it right now though. Like it did like r- literally down to the wire. So um... just so everyone knows, this is kind of what we're doing. We want uh, the folks who were chosen to do our intro for us and explain why 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 they've subjected us to these movies correct Mm -hmm. because all all of them will probably need explanation (laughs) some of them there are no excuse for but well they will all require explanations we will see we were one in so far we'll see what the other we'll see what fortune holds for us for the rest of them but anyway here is uh robert hooper's explanation and play there we go Hi, I'm Rob Hooper, and I'm Sinbad's biggest fan. This is one of my favorite movies. I'm the biggest idiot ever. You know when I pick a movie, that's when I'm on to pressure now. The question always comes back to me, what will they think? Welcome, 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 welcome. <laughs> yes, welcome everyone. Even you, Rob. <laughs> Especially you, Rob. I would just like to start out by clarifying that we're just playing around. Rob's a great guy. He actually, he's a, uh, a a new dad, and so congratulations to him and his, his uh, lady on their their new family that they've uh, I see on Facebook. They're they're getting along quite well. Uh, mm-hmm. Him being a new dad, so congrats, Rob. I hope you just take that with the with the the fun lighted ribbing that it was. I don't think you're the biggest idiot ever. <laughs> I will say he does sound very different on the phone. He definitely does. <laughs> uh, but yes, Robert Hooper. Um, well, actually, you know what? We'll just uh, he graced us with a number of movies. Of course, mm-hmm. we got everyone this this month for listeners' choice to pick five movies, and uh, we and if we chose one out of there, then we would do that one and no other ones from that person. Right. So I want to so get... off my impression of Rob again this month. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty spot on. It's pretty spot on for his phone voice, not his real voice. Right. Yeah. So Rob decided to give us all Sinbad movies, and not the sailor, but the African American comedian from the nineties. Delightfully alive, underrated, I will. I will often say, I think he's. I think he actually is derided more than he deserves because I think he's. He was very. He was definitely a product of his time, uh, as far as comedians go. I think he's just very safe. Yes, that's a he's, good word. Yeah, he's, he's a very sort of, safe comedian. Uh, now I I'm I'm not compare I'm not saying in terms of quality but it's almost like a Jay Leno thing where he's his jokes are very like hey just kidding yo ha it's a good time <laughs> yes but I will actually say that I don't seek the wanton destruction of Sinbad the way I seek the wanton destruction of Jay Leno well that's why I said quality aside <laughs> right <laughs> but yes we watched the Cherokee Kid the HBO uh, TV movie, which we should have clarified, only theatrically released movies, but that's okay. That's on Brendan, so... That's on me. Yeah. I will take the hit for that. Um, but yes, The Cherokee Kid, starring Sinbad, Burt Reynolds, James Coburn. Um, I like to call him a Martinez, but I know it's a Martinez. Because <laughs> that's how the credit comes up, there's no period. All right. uh, and, uh, a Martinez. Uh, Ernie, another, Hudson. Er, Ernie Hudson. Ernie Hudson. Gregory, you say Gregory Hines? Hines. Yeah. Yep. The tap Everybody was in this movie, man. <laughs> tap dancer Gregory Hines. <laughs> and actor. He's done <laughs> acting. 
True. I like to think of him as the tap dancer because that makes so many of his roles that much funnier. <laughs> so yeah, Cherokee Kid. Um, the only thing that I really there there was not a lot of information about this movie. It was released in 1996. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I said, HBO movie. And inexplicably, I did find out it was inexplicably it was released around Christmas time, which was kind of a odd air date choosing of the, for this movie. But oh, it's it's HBO. I mean, they probably. They probably started airing it that they didn't stop airing it that, you know, probably, I don't know, August, September of the following year. Yeah, so. just 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 uh, kind of stuck out for me. <laughs> not all 4th. their stuff is, you know, they don't, it's, it's not like Hallmark uh, or Lifetime where they was like, okay, now is a barrage of Christmas movies because it's Christmas, guys. Yeah, I mean, yeah. isn't that how it works for everyone? At, at Lifetime and also the Hallmark, yes. Uh, but HBO is just like, yo, we're going to make some movies. HBO is basically the same channel. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get into the Cherokee Kid. Uh, the first thing I wanted to note before the movie even really gets going is that the production company is Afros and Bell Bottoms Productions. <laughs> okay. I looked them up. They have made one movie and it was the Cherokee Kid. <laughs> No, nope, well, there, you know. It's also you know Sinbad's what when you when you company. when you get it right the first time out, <laughs> you don't need to go back. You don't need to prove yourself again. So how do we start this film, uh, Nathan? A very familiar wrestling character shows up, the Undertaker. <laughs> right off the bat, I, Sinbad is killed. <laughs> minute, <laughs> minute in minute. Laramie, Texas. Right. I actually have a oh, quick movie. That this will be a short podcast. <laughs> Just that's exactly what I've done. I was like, and Sinbad's dead credits. <laughs> so yeah, Sinbad starts off by having a duel with this man called the Undertaker, not mm-hmm. played by Mark Calloway, played by Gregory <laughs> Tap Dancer Gregory Hines. A missed opportunity, but I know one that's understood as to what comes up later. So. Well, well, yeah, that would have made a little less sense. <laughs> But yes, uh, Sinbad has a duel with The Undertaker. It just feels weird. It sounds weird saying that. <laughs> and it takes more than Sinbad to break the streak, okay? I'm just going <laughs> to put that out there. Especially in 1996. Yeah. That streak wasn't going anywhere. Undertaker guns him down, and that and, and, and Sinbad's dead. And anyway, so Nathan, what were they thinking? All right. <laughs> Here's my haiku. <laughs> <laughs> La 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 la, comedy, shoot, shoot, Undertaker wrestling. <laughs> but yes, the Undertaker shoots him dead, and it says he's graveyard dead. Yes, I wrote that. I, wrote that I wanted somebody else to be like, is there another kind of dead? <laughs> um, persistent vegetative state dead, maybe. <laughs> well, um, you, I mean, there's spiritually dead. Uh, you know, uh, mentally dead. I- I've met a few people like that. <laughs> yeah, I'll say I've met a few, few hundred. Well, you, well, you work at the theater, so. <laughs> <laughs> you are a regular comedian. I'd like a ticket for the Emoji Movie. Why would I ask for a ticket? <laughs> no, I'm saying the people that you've met oh, through I your work. You were, I thought you were making fun of me. No, no, Brendan. See, if I were doing that, <laughs> I would. Wait. Man, that, I, was that I give you movie ticket? <laughs> was that person pick up the junk emoji? after pick up junk after film put in garbage can? Oh my god! Was that person buying a ticket to the emoji movie Robert Hooper? <laughs> no, Robert Hooper doesn't live in Fredericton. Oh, it sure sounded like him. <laughs> like I said, it's spot on. I keep thinking he's in the room. <laughs> so the Undertaker shoots him. <laughs> he uh, we meet James Coburn fairly early on, and he says, you know. Let's, let's, uh, here's your money, here's your money, and Undertaker says, no, I want to bury my dead, I want to eulogize my dead first. Well, how long is that gonna take? Um, we can bury him tomorrow at noon. Yeah. It's gonna take a day. <laughs> well, you gotta set things up, you gotta get the coffin, you gotta get the plot dug, you gotta, you know, gather folks, let them know where the service is gonna be held, let whoever's gonna speak at the funeral or organize some thoughts that they're gonna have. It's, it's a thing, you, you gotta put it together, you don't wanna look like a jerk with your funeral. <laughs> you gotta gather up all 63 people that live in the town. Right. <laughs> we also and meet... loved and respected the Cherokee kid. <laughs> They right. need to eulogize him like Thomas Jefferson and Robin Hood. Uh, I was just going to say, <laughs> this is where A. Martinez shows up. 
yep. playing Juan Cortina, a, 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 an acclaimed Mexican fighter. At least that's what he keeps saying. Hero of the Mexican people. Right. A, well, a Mexican resistance fighter, I believe, right. he also says. But yeah, he compares him to uh, Montezuma, Thomas Jefferson, and then fictional no, no, no. character Robin Thomas Hood. Thomas Jefferson. <laughs> right. And then fictional character Robin Hood. <laughs> Well, I mean, the spirit is there, I guess. I just thought it was funny that he mentions two <laughs> real-life people, and then the third one is Robin Hood! <laughs> but he tells the story of the Cherokee kid at the funeral. Mm-hmm. And Oh, did you happen to notice that the Reverend uh, was also, or who's also Sinbad's like, adoptive father in this movie, mm-hmm. uh, is, uh, played uh, Hal on 227. I'm not sure I know what 227 is. 227 was a fantastic sitcom uh, with Marla Gibbs, him, and Jack A. <laughs> I've not seen this. You have you have, you have, have missed a giant portion of life because that show was fantastic. All right. I'll put it on my list. Good. I have lived no kind of life at all. It is, um, I don't know, man. It, it, I think the best way to, to describe it... It's it's all it's a blue collar version of the Cosby Show. Mm-hmm. You know where they're just topical. Uh, yeah, uh, at the time it was. I mean. <laughs> oh no no I mean I mean you mentioned Cosby. Oh, yeah, I'm not topical. gonna get into that whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's. The rest of the episode will be about the trial. <laughs> but yes, <sighs> so he tells the story of the Cherokee kid Juan Cortina does, played by A. Martinez, and. It's about a Cher- uh, so Cherokee kid is a young boy. His name is Isaiah. His brother Jedediah, mm-hmm. and their father dies off screen. He's shot by thugs. Or whoever whoever is in James uh, Coburn's little gang there. One of the guys was in the Big Lebowski. What is it? His like right hand man. Yeah, the blonde guy. Yeah, Bonner. Yeah, I kept wanting to call him Boner. He was the one who was like, we know you're the Lebowski we're looking for. You're not dealing with idiots here. Oh, yes. He one of the thugs that, like, beats the shit out of, like, beats the shit out of Jeff Bridges and pisses on his rug or something. Well, he doesn't piss on the rug. It's the, he's uh, the, the other guy. The Asian fellow who pisses on the rug, yeah. Right. Okay, he's the he's the other dude that comes in, though. Exactly. Miss, <laughs> mystery solved. In <laughs> case you were all... Were... Dexter. Oh, really? Yep. Okay, I've seen all of Dexter, so I probably definitely was, saw him. Uh, the the kid's biological dad. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yep. I know exactly who you're talking about. So there you go, folks. That's who Bonner is. That's the uh, right hand man of James Coburn's character. So basically, James Coburn and his gang show up, and uh, Sinbad's mom fake fake shoots one of her other kids mm-hmm. uh, so to he make can get it, away, so he can get away to make it look like uh, she's she basically well says, they were. I'm not going to let you lynch him. I'm just going to shoot him myself. They were trying to kill him because he had actually killed the fellow who was in Coburn's gang that had Mm. killed his father. Right. Has everyone got their their diagrams and and (laughs) flowcharts out? Because I'm I'm piecing this together for you. And no no word of a lie. It does get a little convoluted. (laughs) And this has got to be weird because the whole movie, if we're to understand it, is the eulogy. Yes. It's a long-winded and awkward eulogy, especially okay. some of the stuff that comes up later. Yeah, so also, this falls into the Lone Ranger thing, where, mm-hmm. yeah, remember in Lone Ranger, he's telling this story to the kid, right? Right. And remember how slow he was talking? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just like, it's the same thing, where, like, no one's gonna listen to this story with all these details. <laughs> I will say this, at least he had the uh, the decency to be under two hours, which Johnny Depp did not have in yeah. that movie. Yeah. Which, by the way, was probably like six hours with the way he was delivering his dialogue. Yeah. <laughs> Can I have an intermission? No. Don't do that again. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good Johnny Depp as Tonto. Thank you. So, uh, one the one thing, one line I noted here, James Coburn shoots Sinbad's mother in cold blood, basically. Son and, of a bitch. And says, no one gets in the way of progress. <laughs> no one can stand in the way of progress. <laughs> right, right. Right, yeah. <laughs> Which is uh, pretty much the most uh, opposite line to an action in a movie. <laughs> so Sinbad, you know, runs away. Uh, this this fella Bonner, aka uh, Dexter's uh, stepson's real father, yep. <laughs> to, pretends to shoot him oh, by shooting in the air. Don't forget, she clipped Coburn in the head. Right, he gets a scar. 
Yeah. Yeah. With a shotgun. She clips him with a shotgun. I don't know how you clip people with a shotgun. Yeah. Unless, that... <laughs> unless it's lo- unless the shot is loaded with a slug instead of buckshot, his face should have been hamburger. <laughs> yeah, that was alarming to me. I was like, when she did that, I was like, oh, he's James Coburn just got killed. <laughs> And then I was like, oh, wait, wasn't he at the beginning of the movie? Oh, okay, he's got a nick on his forehead. That yeah. makes sense. <laughs> so, here, here's the thing, too, they kind of threw me with. So, early... So, as uh, Sinbad's running away, Bonner goes after him and just shoots into the air and says, like, you know, I got him, I got I him. I got him. I thought there... Now, obviously, he's doing it because he just doesn't want to chase him down. He, he says, like, oh, you know, I got him, we're good, let's go. But yeah. I thought there it was going to be a character thing where he actually couldn't shoot a child. Oh, where he actually be... had a bit of a soul? Yeah, and I thought mm-hmm. later, because he kind of gets abused by James Coburn later in the mm-hmm. movie, yep. and I thought he was going to have a sort of turn there, but mm. uh, clearly that is not what happened. Such was not the case, is right? <laughs> no. So, Mama's dead, Sinbad goes and finds the Reverend and his wife to live with, and waste up, their tomatoes waste their tomatoes and grows up 18 years later with uh some wonderful hair dye in his hair in his hair <laughs> which they definitely had back then right i will say this is one of the tropes that i really 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 hate well no though. actually i'm sorry to interrupt but his don't forget we come to find out that his dad was part cherokee okay so i mean the, the hair could have been a naturally occurring uh you know a pigment I don't know what sort of aberration because of the fact that uh, he's, you know, he shares a bloodline with uh, Native Americans. I also feel like that was Sinbad's argument to just not do anything with his hair, though. That's a possibility as well. <laughs> <laughs> Will you wear a wig? No, no. Um, Cherokee uh, pigment. Oh, okay. I did reach out to Sinbad, actually, via Twitter. Mm. He never got back to me, unfortunately, though. Darn, what did you say? Uh, I actually said... Hey, watching the Cherokee kid, and I wanted to ask, how much line riffing did you do in the movie? Really enjoying the movie, by the way. If we hear from him, we will talk about it. I'll fill you in, for sure. Yeah, talk about it on the show. Definitely. (laughs) Sinbad grows grows up 18 years later, and he's, he basically decides, he goes, well, sorry, he goes to town, because he's chasing a turkey. Well, before this, it was was a bit of business with uh, his adoptive parents, Every he wants to leave and go to town because he knows that Coburn is going to be in town. He he wants to go seek his revenge, and his mom keeps trying to stop him, but she keeps telling his dad to t- to talk to him. Mm. And I have a note: he's right there. Why do you keep telling the dad to say something? And I, I thought that was a really funny, clever note. And then Sinbad addresses it immediately in the movie. Yeah, I was just gonna say, <laughs> and then he says it. He like yeah. heard you. <laughs> <laughs> the first time a movie's ever responded to my uh, to my complaints directly. Actually, Nathan, <laughs> what I was doing was he decides to yeah he decides to go and then find James Coburn and kill him as revenge. Uh, he ends up chasing a turkey down because he brings one sandwich with him. Oh, pratfalls are definitely the order of the day for this movie. Like mm-hmm. that, and the fact that he has no real sense of direction. <laughs> no, none. It's referenced so many times. Although, I do like what he says, uh, me and you, Turkey, and one of us gotta die. As in, like, if Sinbad doesn't kill that turkey, that turkey will murder him. (laughs) Well, you know, given the fact that he is absolutely inept with uh, with any sort of fighting or weaponry or, you know... Riding a horse at the first of this movie, in frontier times, by I might add... It is a possibility that the turkey could kill him. <laughs> that would have been... And and then it just goes to credits there instead. Instead of at the beginning of the movie. <laughs> just transitions into uh, thanks killing for the <laughs> the origins. <laughs> thanks killing in the Old West. Good God. <laughs> One thanks killing was enough. Shout out to Brent. <laughs> I'm sorry, Brent. I'm not with you on that movie. <laughs> gobble, gobble, motherfucker. <laughs> oh boy so we get uh wild west andrew carver at this point mm-hmm. <laughs> from showgirls yep uh, b- because he chases so sinbad chased the turkey under the bed and basically this guy comes in and starts beating up a prostitute <laughs> or as they call them in this movie whores 
Well, I mean, that was the, I believe that actually was the, 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 not the preferred term, but the used term at the time. True. I just thought it was really, really kind of funny that just the way that he was like, he just calls her straight up a whore. I was not expecting it at all. (laughs) They they say whore more in this movie than we did in the Showgirls episode. (laughs) (laughs) And Sinbad does inject his stand-up into this movie a lot, I feel, because, so... Well, anyway. that's just it. That's why I wanted to know how much riffing he did during the movie because there's a lot of stuff in the movie that's like, it, you could tell. I don't feel it was written because it was delivered at such a a, a fast pace that I I think a lot of it was just coming off the top of his head. Uh, we were like, these are the beats we want you to hit, so just say some stuff. Like an old school wrestling promo. Almost, yeah. Yeah. So uh, Sinbad, yeah. So he he, he gets uh, they the guy hears the turkey, the, the the guy that's beating up the prostitute, and and thinks, <laughs> oh, there's a turkey. There must be a person there too, yeah. and he drags person out. Sinbad throws the turkey at him, causing his gun to go off, and the guy dies. Yes, <laughs> the guy Just dies via turkey. B- d- d- through sheer turkey luck. Yep, sheer turkey. <laughs> what a turkey. Oh, very good. Uh, 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 uh. Um, yeah. So the, she she proclaims him as uh, her hero, her light complected hero. Yeah, yeah. Her stunningly handsome, and I just wrote, man, she has got some eye issues. <laughs> I also wrote, Simbad wrote this part. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was his production company, right? <laughs> In this scene, I just want you to say how goddamn handsome I am. <laughs> <laughs> Lie. Got it. <laughs> Oh, poor Sinbad. So uh, I'm just getting around, just like I was with Rob. Yeah, and you know both of them the 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 same, right? Oh yeah, they both listen. Yeah. Well, no, I mean you you know oh. uh, you know both of them just as well. Oh yes, as the of other. course. Yes. Well, I obviously I was able to DM Sinbad on Twitter, so. Oh, there you go. So yeah. his DMs are open. Yeah. Slide into Sinbad's dirty S- mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the only time someone has ever accused Sinbad of having a dirty mouth. I true. True. He's a fairly clean comedian, so that was that was the opportunity right there. <laughs> oh boy. Now, so Sinbad, okay, so Sinbad gets, you know, she she feeds him, the prostitute gives him supper. I I believe yep. they cook the turkey. Yes. Yes. And then the next day she's gone. We never well, see her hold on, for the hold rest on of the movie. We find out a pretty important thing uh in this movie about Sinbad before that. Uh, he reads the back of the guy's belt and can read the guy's name, that it's Jake Carver. Right. And uh, she is kind of incredulous to the fact that he can read. And he's like, yeah, it's written right there. Uh, and she says, oh, well, I I, I, I can read. I just, I'm as French, <laughs> is what she says. Right. Uh, but it is a big thing because at that time in American history, uh, it was actually uh, illegal uh to teach uh black folks to read well and i was gonna say too um i realized there there are a lot of african-american folks in this movie mm-hmm. but i feel like at the time now it is it is a silly comedy obviously but at the time at, i don't believe they would be freely walking around as they do in this movie well this is after this would have been this would have been after the uh, uh the emancipation proclamation Okay. And as you can kind of tell by the town uh, and the church that they have, they also have their own kind of little community. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a that's a little more believable uh, than is to say that if it were in you know during like the you know slavery times, this was probably after the abolition. So okay, I'll buy it. Yeah. Well, and that sets them apart from basically everyone in the movie, aside yep. from a very few characters. There's another movie. Uh, uh, which we may end up covering too, which is very similar in in, in its setting and tone. Uh, Lightning Jack, you've ever seen that? <laughs> Coming soon with Paul Hogan and Cuba Gooding Jr. Oh boy, yeah. So, but yeah, the whore left the next day. She did, and then a bunch of ga- a bunch of thugs show up, and lo and behold, they were the thugs. They were the cousins of the guy that was just killed. And by the way, one of them is Walton Goggins. I know, right? I was so excited. I thought he was going to be in more of the movie, though, but I was still happy to see him. Yeah. 
so they he basically does his little stand up routine to try to, to try to you know defend himself and says yeah, oh yeah yeah we were gonna rob a bank talks himself out of a lynching right and because talks first he into... introduces himself as Jake Carver yeah and then they're like oh that's funny because we're his cousins yeah. <laughs> And he's like, oh, no, I was uh, told to, uh, st- uh, you know, uh, we got to do a bank robbery. And then they basically make him go with them, go with them to the bank robbery. Mm-hmm. And I gotta say, this is a kind of a funny scene. I really actually like the the exchange here. Yeah, so he has a little... <laughs> Killed by a rabid rabbit. Yeah, he has a little exchange <laughs> with the teller. Um <laughs> I don't know. It, I can't really do it justice, but basically, it's very, it's very quick and back and offers, forth. Offers if you give us this much money to to uh, deposit for you, we'll give you a gift of pine tar soap. Yeah, and then he goes back to the guys and says, "Hey, they're going to give pine tar soap," and they're like, "No, we're robbing the bank." Also, this point, Walton Goggins admits to that he doesn't bathe. <laughs> And he does a little thing that I hope was improvised, where in the background you just kind of see him. Like, he says, I don't care about smell. And then you see him in the background kind of smelling himself a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, he does, there is an odd part, there is an odd line when the teller says his grandmother's name was Isaiah because she was very mannish. <laughs> yes. That doesn't age so well. <laughs> also, the, uh, uh, and if you invest this much today, we'll give you a, a gingham apron embroidered. He's like, well, hush my mouth. <laughs> Yes, I He's... really like the exchange with with Sinbad and the teller in this this part of the movie. Yeah, the only the only thing that really that really stood out as odd was the the mannish thing. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, Sinbad basically tells him, "Hey, they're robbing the bank, and they all get arrested because when you invest three hundred dollars in the bank, you get a gun." By the way, yep. that probably still exists. I like how James Coburn is dressed as Mark Twain during his speech. <laughs> James Coburn. <laughs> is great <laughs> mm-hmm. running for mayor he's running for mayor so yeah sinbad goes to town uh anyway the bank robbery thing happens and he meets up with bonner who doesn't obviously doesn't recognize him because he's a lot older now yep gives him his reward which is probably like a quarter or a dime or something well i i think that was supposed to be a slight because i'm sure yeah. there was an actual legitimate reward for these guys but uh i think they were supposed to understand that uh there would have been re- a reward a big reward for these guys had a white chap turn them in well yeah and there's also that line where bon- he cuz bonner says like something about like he calls him son he says you aren't my daddy and he's like i don't know i slept with a lot of colored whores yeah I so like, I mean, Yeesh. clearly he's got uh, you know no no cultural uh, uh, forward thinking whatsoever. Also, they they <laughs> do drop the n word in this movie a couple times. They do, and um, it's not Sinbad saying it. No, but I, again, it's it is a period piece. True. Uh, you you certainly would uh, do a disservice by glossing over the way a bad guy actually would talk at that point in time. I mean, it's also a silly Sinbad comedy though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Sometimes I feel there's a lot more going on in this movie than uh, than just you know the 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 funny chicanery of of Sinbad and his his hijinks. Sinbad was like, "This is my Citizen Kane." Oh, let's let's not go that far. Oh, okay. <laughs> Citizen Kane, that hack Orson Welles. Yeah, what a what a <coughs> no talent, <laughs> no talent schemester. Uh, so yeah, Sinbad. Basically gets upset, shoots Bonner in the ass <laughs> with a gun that he steals from someone else, runs over, and then sees James Coburn making his big speech. Yeah. Because basically he's taking people's, forcing people off their land uh, so he can take, the, so he can get rich. Sinbad tries to shoot him, but he shoots him with his old rusty gun, so of He's a poor happens. planner for assassination, he, I gotta say. Yeah, his big plan ends up being, I'm gonna shoot James Coburn in the middle of his speech in front of the whole town. Yeah, with armed guards all around him and on buildings. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was at this point in the in the uh, the watching of my movie where I was like, I think I have the twist figured out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Were you correct? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So Burt Reynolds, uh, not Burt Reynolds. What am I talking? He's not showing up yet. So uh, Bonner is at the bar getting the bullet taken out of his ass. Yep. Which I thought was funny. I was like, why is he not with a doctor? <laughs> because it's the old West. You know, it was the kind of time where you needed a tooth pulled. You went to the barber. <laughs> when the tooth is in your hair? No, legitimately, if you needed a tooth pulled, like a dentist, a dentist and the barber oftentimes did this, the, the job. I know they had doctor's offices. 
if I'm not kidding, look it up. A barber office and a, and a dentist. Uh, sorry, a, a barber shop and a dentist's office were often one and the same at this point in time. Yeah, but but doctors themselves, they had doctors' offices. True, but think of how small the uh, the town was. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, so James Coburn comes in and realizes that realizes that it's the kid from the beginning of the movie. He <laughs> doesn't. That's what he says. He says, "Hey, it's the kid from the beginning of the movie." Just like but, that. And I was really taken out by that uh, <laughs> that fourth wall break. Yeah, it took me right out of the movie. Mm-hmm. He actually pulls the bullet out of Bonner's ass himself. <laughs> and tells him, basically, your job depends on it. You better find that guy. Mm-hmm. And deliver his carcass. Okay. We need to talk about Burt Reynolds. <laughs> we certainly do. Because <laughs> I don't... Mm, Burt Reynolds, when he's slumming it, I think is still okay. But mm-hmm. I feel like in this movie, he does not give a shit. Well, he... I mean, don't forget, he is supposed to be kind of grizzled as well. True. But during some of his... Even during some of his lines, though, it just looked like he didn't care. I, I got... You know, he, I, at the time, I feel you would get that from most Burt Reynolds deliveries. Yeah, and there, but there's also a difference between Burt Reynolds not caring and then Burt Reynolds kind of being like charming and stuff like Smokey and the Bandit. Uh, well, yeah, but I mean, you're this is decades from Smokey and the Bandit. Okay, well, there's a difference between Boogie Nights, Burt Reynolds, and like Burt Reynolds in like a '90s movie where he's just getting a paycheck. All right, fair enough. So, yeah, Burt Reynolds is a mountain man named Otter Bob. Otter Bob. So the, <laughs> yeah, and he has that whole line about Buffalo Bill. <laughs> he hates Buffalo Bill. Killed a thousand otters in two days. You know how, hard it is, how easy it is to kill a buffalo? <laughs> right. Just shoot behind you and you got one. Uh, Sinbad and, and Burt Bur- Reynolds become friends very quickly. Yes, because he wants Sinbad to read the, porn? the, the dirty book that he has. Yeah, Old West Porn. <laughs> one of them dirty books. It's not one of them dirty. <laughs> he starts describing the... Th- it's like, ooh, Fifi's a freak. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> Fifi's the short-haired one. And Burt Reynolds goes, I knew it. <laughs> which again goes back to the the fact that Sinbad can read Burt Reynolds can't so I mean it's a big deal the fact that Sinbad can read in this movie or at least his character can he's a mountain man yep he's his brother's sister's cousin he's a mountain man <laughs> yes <laughs> so yeah Sinbad and Burt Reynolds they this is like quite a large portion of the movie where they are just hanging out yep and Sinbad says listen I'll, I'll teach you how to read your porn if you teach me how to do basically everything, yeah, he wants to get one of the blankets, and he said, "You want to, you want fur? Go get it yourself." So he puts so a, he get a shot on of, him. He gets a shot of Sinbad sleeping with a rabbit on him, like it's supposed to be his blanket. A live, then, a live rabbit. Yeah, yeah. And then the next morning, <laughs> Burt Reynolds is eating his blanket. Oh, I found that kind of disturbing. <laughs> I laughed so hard. Rabbit is delicious, by the way. I've never had it. It is. It is. A, it is a treat. Okay. Yep. I can never. I. Oh, rabbits are so adorable. Oh Jesus, Brendan, grow a pair. Not killing a rabbit. Yeah, already killed several. What were they thinking? The end. <laughs> oh, don't be such a pansy. No, I. I, I have a. I have a deer head on my wall downstairs. That's fine. I. Mm-hmm. I it's not for everyone. I know it's not. So, but they are delicious. <sighs> Burt Reynolds. <laughs> Burt Reynolds. No, not Burt Reynolds. Rabbits. No, Burt Reynolds is delicious. That's what you said. <laughs> well, so, he, you know, if we're talking like what seventies, oh, Burt oh, Reynolds. Oh dear. <laughs> we <laughs> every now and then we unravel a little bit more about you, Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> about both of us, Brendan. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, we answered Jazz's question last week, so. Ben Affleck. <laughs> we should tweet him. Let's see what he thinks. So, Burt Reynolds, we go through a montage of Burt Reynolds teaching Sinbad how to shoot. And yep. he still kind of sucks at it. And how to, how to fish. And, mm-hmm. like, this is this is one part where I really got the sense that Burt Reynolds didn't care. Because when he says this joke, he just, he says, this fish says, you are really stupid. Just the way he said it, it's just like, <laughs> I have to say this line and then just, we're done. And when he does finally start to take, get the hang of things, uh, Burt Reynolds has another really fun little line. He's like, great, you can kill a cup. Right. <laughs> I believe this is also the time when Burt Reynolds goes to cash in his fur. 
Oh, and fucking goes postal when he finds out the the fur trader's been treating him all. Uh, sorry, cheating him all this time. Which I think from this scene, you're supposed to get the idea that Burt Reynolds has always kind of known, but but never been able to substantiate because he's not smart. Right, because he can't do math, and right. Sinbad is a a whiz at math. The whiz? He's Fred Savage. He's a whiz, and oh. also Fred Savage was not the wizard; it was his brother. Remember? No, I don't know. Ugh. It's been years. I you sh- should see that movie at least once every two years. I'm just gonna put that out there. That's upsetting. So yes, uh, he's a math whiz. He's mm-hmm. he's Fred Savage's brother. Yeah, Bernal straight up murders the guy. Well, I mean, to be fair, the shop owner was reaching for his gun. Mm-hmm. To... Now it's time for some looting. So it's some looting. They, st- they steal. Well, they take their money and then steal a bunch of booze. Then the shop, the other shop owner or the guy's son or something comes yep. up and shoots at them as they get away. Mm-hmm. And then Sinbad gets drunk. Well, Sinbad tries to jump on the wagon as it's getting away and misses it by that much. Mm-hmm. And then he gets drunk because I mean you gotta you know take the pain of getting eating a face full of gravel. Sinbad has one of the strangest acting choices for reacting to liquor. <laughs> like he kind of does the the almost. It's not racist that he's doing it, but it's similar to the racist thing where somebody's imitating a Native American and does the like hoo 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 thing. He, he's he was raised by uh, a, a reverend a reverend rather and his wife, so more than likely than not they're they were teetotalers so he's probably never ever had liquor in his life at least the character anyways and so for him to react that way because apparently that that liquor from my understanding uh, from the movie will take the stink right off that lizard <laughs> yes because they're eating lizard for supper but just like i just mean as an acting choice i thought that i thought the drunk acting was really strange <laughs> so he's also say it would that the, it smells like the toenails of a dead man oh yeah <laughs> Which I guess he smelled before. Well, um, again, his, his his dad was a his adoptive dad was a minister, so he's probably been to a few funerals. I, I thought you were gonna say like when his dad was killed, he like went up and smelled his toenails. <laughs> no. So Sinbad's kind of a monster at this point because Burt Reynolds is like, like, oh yeah, you can kill a bear. I killed a bear with my bare hands. That's how you should do it. So Sinbad That's how Mountain off- Man does it. <laughs> yeah. So Sinbad goes off to kill a bear, and he kills a baby bear. <laughs> he kills a boar. I thought it was a bear. No, that was a boar. Wait, really? <laughs> yes, because that's the joke. Oh. He was he misunderstood the word. Wow, I missed that completely. Maybe this it was too dark or something. I thought no, he just he, killed a I baby saw bear. This, I, I saw the it, the pig snout and tusks. Oh. See, I thought, and and then I thought, wow, Sinbad killed a baby bear. What a fucking asshole, <laughs> Brendan. I gotta I gotta let you know what there would have been no chance of survival for folks like you. <laughs> in that well, time. I'm well aware of that. Okay. That's why I don't live in the Old West. Oh, that's well, that's why. a good choice that you haven't, you know, decided to time travel back to the to frontier times. Yeah. Fuck that yeah. shit. <laughs> uh, Burt Reynolds starts to have a nervous breakdown at this point. Mm. Because he thinks he sees snakes. Right. Well, well, he thinks he sees a snake, and it's a stick, but then later he thinks he sees a snake, and it is a snake. So I'm not sure what's Between going on. Between Sinbad's legs. Right. And he's like, no, no, that's that's my pet. That's my pet snake. <laughs> but I don't, like, I don't... Are they trying to say he's crazy? Or are they trying to say, like, there actually was a snake the entire time? Or did he just recover before, by the next day? Or what's well, going on? Well, he, he may have had been clear-headed because he wasn't drunk. See, I, I, I didn't even know that he was drunk because it's the day after... They were drinking mm. all night, and I assumed he was either hungover. At first, I thought he was just hungover, and then mm-hmm. I thought, oh, he's starting to lose his mind. That's well, a possibility, but we never get to really explore that too, too much. No, because of what happens next. Right. So Dexter's, Bonner, yeah, Bonner, yeah, Bonner gang. shows no, up. No, no, does... say, no, say who he is. <laughs> uh, uh, Dexter's kid's real dad. <laughs> right, Dexter's kid's real dad, real dad shows up with his thugs. And they say some not okay <laughs> things. Uh, yeah, this is where I think this is where the N word happens. Yes, it is. And Burt Reynolds Says is like, too. yeah, I've never really liked that word. I was found it kind of ugly, and so I was like, good job, Burt Reynolds. But he also says it. <laughs> well, he he. Well, I mean, under threat of being <laughs> shot by, you know, it was under duress, is what I'm getting at. Yes. Basically, they threaten him. Where's Sinbad? We want to, you know, just give him up. 
course, Burt Reynolds is not going to do that because they're BFFs. Mm-hmm. And Zibad shows up. There's a scuffle. I think they, they do kill like at least one or two of them, of the thugs, yes. if not yeah. all of them except Bonner. And then Burt Reynolds is shot by Bonner. Son of a bitch. And he is dead city. Graveyard dead. Graveyard dead. And he even says, I don't want my last words to be, my last word to be what? <laughs> and it was. He slaps Sinbad when he wakes him up again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but his last word is what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, at this point, I did write, this is a long story. People at the funeral must be like, bro, this ain't all about yes. you. <laughs> all this is going on during the eulogy. All this that... You know, uh, Juan could not have seen. Yes, that is another issue. This was, this was the issue. What was the movie where we said that too? The, la- the we did another movie like that, and oh, I, hmm. we were like that. That's impossible. Oh, Silent Night, Deadly Night Part Two. Oh yes, remember because we were like he was a baby. Yes. Also, he was he wasn't even present when his brother was doing all the killing. Right, he wasn't even in most of those scenes. Yeah. Or he was a baby, and there's no way he remembers that. Right. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, you could you could pro- you could say maybe Sinbad told him later, but I mean, based on Sinbad's interactions with Juan Cortina before you know the ending of the movie, I don't think he would have t- talked to him for a very long time. Or possibly would have, at the very least, made the stories less embarrassing to him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, and it's not like he could have asked Burt Reynolds because Burt Reynolds' character dies. Right. So, yeah, that... Flaws. <laughs> Fatal flaw. Um, I do... Now, this movie... Definitely there's no clips of the movie online uh, on YouTube or anything. But I did have one because... Okay. A. Martinez's accent <laughs> as uh, Juan Cortina, I thought, okay, well, maybe that's the guy, like, he's just playing up his own accent a little bit. Mm-hmm. Just, just reeling it, reeling it up a little bit. But then, I just want to play a brief, very, very brief clip of him talking. This is the actor talking, uh, so we'll, we'll see. Let's just take a look. Take a listen. I know so many of the people in the cast, right? Santa Barbara was shot 150 yards away. They were our lead-in, you know, Jason's was our lead-in. So he's he's doing a wacky accent, mm-hmm. a very broad Mexican accent. Because I even th- I even stopped and said, okay, maybe I'm being racist, and this is just like his real voice. <laughs> well, but, it's kind of like when when Eddie Guerrero, you know, jacked up his uh, accent for his promos and stuff. At least Eddie had a little bit of an accent. I suppose this this guy is straight up like there's no. He sounds like you or I. Like, <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know. We don't have an accent, or we okay. have an American accent, Canadian accent. <laughs> I don't know about you, eh? Oh, but <laughs> yeah, that's how we all sound like. Oh yeah, yeah. We all we're also Swedish. <laughs> all right, and from so, at this North point, Dakota. Juan is definitely in into like a filibuster. Mm-hmm. I mean, with that eulogy, and but this is where he first meets Juan. Right before he is uh, attacked by a giant Gila monster. <laughs> Buried up to his neck in the sand. Yep. Yes. And Sinbad saves him, and Juan is so grateful that he just, like, re- like motor mouths for basically the rest of the... Anytime he's on screen, he's just nonstop talking. Yeah. And Sinbad... And Sinbad is getting annoyed by his constant talking. <laughs> and he even says, he asks how he can repay him for saving his life, and he's like, look, if, if you shut up and go to sleep right now, we'll call it even. Right. <laughs> yeah. And so they he reluctantly has Juan travel with him. To and, El Paso, Mexico. To El Paso, Mexico. Yes. <laughs> and they go to a pub. Yep. Where we meet the or actually, I believe it may have been also a brothel or house of ill repute because there were some fine looking dance hall ladies there. Yes. Mm-hmm. I would I would say yes, it's probably also a brothel. I feel like every bar in the old west was also a brothel. Good good chance, a good chance of it. <laughs> if you walked into a bar, there was a ninety percent chance you were getting laid. <laughs> Which uh, a lot lower now, actually. It's considerably. So yes, they go into this bar, and <laughs> we meet the writer of the movie or the co-writer, mm-hmm. Tim Kazarinsky. Mm-hmm. Uh, he comes in with his uh, toothbrushes. 
<laughs> which apparently they're big in London. I yeah. call bullshit. Well, I thought, see, at first I thought that was the joke. But then he yeah. says, they're big in London, Paris, and then a bunch of other places. So I don't think that was meant to be a joke. But yeah, it's definitely, no. No, it's not. Well, he names all, like, the, what are would have been considered metropolitan hubs at the time. Right. Because, like, if he had just said London, I was like, oh, okay, I get it. Ha, ha, ha. But he <laughs> says Paris. And I'm like, well, they're not known for their bad teeth or anything. So. <laughs> <laughs> and Sinbad meets a girl who's really into oral oh. <laughs> care. Uh, that I just wrote toothbrush seduction. Yeah. That was an odd bit. Well, not it, it just kind of helps show off her her prowess, I well, guess. Well, I'm going to say this. This is a weird thing for me, but I don't like when people use toothbrushes in movies. <laughs> it grosses me them. out. <laughs> it's gross. I don't know what it is. It's just Oh ugh. my god. Don't maybe watch, like, Toothbrush the movie or something, Nathan. Uh, so we've got, uh, what, now we've got uh, mascots, clowns. <laughs> well, I can watch mascots and clowns in People movies, in though. toothbrushes. I know. I can watch mascots and clowns in movies. I, I, anytime there's someone brushing their teeth, I'm just like, Bleh! It's worse than when you had to watch Harrison Ford's sex scene. Oh, you're ten-ply blood. Ten-ply. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, she she basically seduces him with her toothbrush. He he seduces back, I guess. <laughs> and this is Bonner's uh, I don't know. He clearly already has the concept of teeth, uh, toothbrushes because uh, his character's teeth are flawless in this movie. <laughs> yeah, and, like, some other characters don't have bad teeth either. <laughs> right. But, I mean, if they made everyone's teeth super disgusting, it would be very distracting. <laughs> that, that's true. Oh, yeah, Sinbad's got his pearly whites. But... Uh, so, this is a trap. Bonner catches uh, Sinbad. And, like, mm-hmm. I thought it was weird. He arrests him. Like, why didn't he just kill him there? Isn't he a sheriff, though? Yeah, but does he... He's corrupt as fuck, though. He is, but he's also. it's also a, a bar full of patrons. You know, yeah. you don't want... Even as a corrupt official, you don't want to try to shoot one person and kill an innocent town folk. That will... Uh, that would definitely... Put a hamper on your uh, re-election campaign. <laughs> well, it's at this point where Sinbad is tossed into jail mm-hmm. and meets Ernie Hudson. Who, I was, did he lose like a, a bunch of weight for like a year or something? Because I don't ever remember him being that svelte. Uh, like, well, even as Winston, he was like a big barrel chested dude. In any other movie I've seen him in, he's always been a, a a large guy. This he looked really slender in this movie in comparison. Well, I mean, even Ghostbusters two, I think, was still at the tail end of the eighties, so this mm. would have been like six or seven years after that. Yeah. Well, how, what was he? What was he like in The Crow? He was a, he was a, a a larger dude. Okay, that was only uh, two years before this, right? Hmm. That's why I said that he lose like a bunch of weight for like about a year or so. He ar- he was the first user of DDP yoga. <laughs> Even before DDP was, uh, uh, you know, given how self high fives. <laughs> yes. Well, this is D- th- he was DDP's uh, test subject, and then DDP kind of gave it up for a while, and then he went back to the yoga. Oh, okay. He's like, if you ask him, he'd be like, Ernie Hudson was my test bro. <laughs> Ernie Hudson, and then Scott Hall. <laughs> so yeah he i i at this point in the movie it's so like um it's almost comically historically inaccurate at times just just for but i mean like again it's a silly comedy so i'm not putting a lot of stock into it but it would have been funny if sinbad was just like because he says hey aren't ain't you nate love i would have loved to be just like hey ain't you the black ghostbuster Ah. <laughs> A quick side note: Sorry, I went to see love. the the Crow at a midnight screening uh, a few years back, mm-hmm. when uh, Empire theaters were still a thing. And um, every time he was on screen, there was some drunken asshole in the crowd who kept yelling out, "Winston! Oh, Look, God. it's Winston!" I just wanted to fucking strangle that person. <laughs> the only time you're like, I hope Ernie Hudson's character gets killed off now. <laughs> I wasn't wishing ill upon his character. I was wishing ill upon that person in the in the audience. Oh, you know, I just maybe an <laughs> embolism or an aneurysm or something. Or I just mean because if his character was killed off, the guy would stop yelling. Would have stopped. Yes, yeah. exactly. You, you you take what you can get. 
Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, Sinbad meets Ernie Hudson, uh, mm-hmm. a.k.a. Nat Love, a.k.a. Deadwood Dick. Deadwood Dick. <laughs> <laughs> and... Jay, and then Jay, yeah, so James Coburn shows up to kind of taunt Sinbad, and the way they were talking back and forth, it was almost like Sinbad was legitimately stepping on his lines, mm. <laughs> and it almost seemed like Coburn was getting legitimately annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> but he always has that kind of salty look to him. Is he still alive? No, he is unfortunately shuttled off this mortal coil. Oh, that's un- that's unfortunate. Yeah. Great character actor, James Coburn. Yeah, yeah, I loved him in Duck, you sucker. <laughs> It's a great movie. Ducky One of the Sinbad. often overlooked, yeah, often overlooked uh, westerns. Uh, oh, okay, okay. I thought that was like an exploitation movie. Nope. I I was thinking you were. I think it, I was thinking like I'm gonna get you. I'm sucka. gonna get you, sucker. Yeah. It's also great, by the way. Yes. So yes, James Coburn basically says, you know, you're gonna hang. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna kill you. You're getting in my way. We also we also find out from uh, Deadwood Dick that um, uh, Jedediah was was killed years before by the undertaker yes he rests he rests in peace now right got tombstoned <laughs> he got tombstoned aka shot yeah so simbad so basically juan cortina took comes the back last ride <laughs> choke slam straight to hell <laughs> old, old school, school on him <laughs> <laughs> but so, no we get jailbreak yeah juan cortina breaks them out yep and there is a funny bit here where Juan, uh, Sinbad says, okay, okay, we're even now. You can leave. And then someone's about to shoot Juan and Sinbad shoots the guy. And then Juan says, you saved my life again. I have to owe you again. He's like, no, no. <laughs> That's pretty funny. So they all decide to go with uh, Nat Love. Ernie. H- Let's just call him Ernie Hudson. <laughs> they all decide to go with Ernie Hudson. I just like changing the name up. So To his hangout. Yes. And uh, we've come to find that the Sinbad has been running after the horse for a good portion of this trip. He must have hella cardio, man. Yeah. 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 He's, uh, well, I mean, look at the guy. <laughs> He's yeah. in super good shape. <laughs> hey, just because you have the body of a tank doesn't mean you don't have the engine of a Ferrari, okay? Well, let's ask uh, Molly. Samoa Joe? Oh, oh, I was going to ask Molly, the girl that uh, ends up taking his cherry. <laughs> yes again super awkward in a eulogy <laughs> yeah oh, i never even thought about that <laughs> and then simbad he couldn't get up on the horse <laughs> but then this girl said she would fuck him and then he got up on the horse wait let me yeah. tell you more about the fucking <laughs> <laughs> i is she's she was she was pretty cute and apparently liked it rough so you know what and apparently Big checks in the pro column on that one. <laughs> Apparently, also, Sinbad has a big dick. <laughs> Do you remember that? Yes. <laughs> no, Sinbad, hey, make sure you say I have a big dick. <laughs> what? I, I don't know where that's going to fit in. You just, just make it work. Uh, you call it, it's like the goats and chickens. I'm like, wait, did they do it? <laughs> <laughs> And all of his all of his jitteriness about riding a horse and and shooting and stuff gone. Apparently, uh, jitters uh, is just um, yeah, that cures uh, jitters is sexual frustration, and you know, getting laid takes care of it all. I will say it's kind of an interesting uh, twist on the whole like the stereotype thing because you know usually it the the guy is not the one that's like oh I'm a virgin and like I need to be like. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you know what Come I mean. On, you can get through this. Yeah, I need to be like I can't think of the word. I need to be, be- not bent in, but like uh, broken in. Broken in. Broken yeah. in. <laughs> it's usually not that stereotype, but the girl is the aggressor, and I thought that was a little bit refreshing for 1996. Yeah, because then they're like, let's start giving. They then they need to give him his gang name, and it's like Dusty Butt, <laughs> and and someone calls him Runt, and she was, and that's where she was like, trust me, he's. Not runty. <laughs> she might as well have said, trust yeah. me, his cock is huge. <laughs> <laughs> and at this point, I wrote, Captain Deadpool. Captain Deadpool? That's what they should call him. Captain oh, Deadpool. Okay. No, that's stupid. Just call him Cherokee Kid. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then they do. They have that joke where that guy says, we should call him the Cherokee Kid like three times. And then yeah. Ernie Hudson says it. And the guy's like, oh, I just said that. <laughs> Yeah, uh, great. Glad you thought of that, boss. <laughs> <laughs> I do think it's weird. So, Ernie Hudson also trains him how to shoot and stuff, right? 
Mm-hmm. I do think it was weird that we had like two mentor characters for Sinbad. Like that was uh, that was a little strange. I felt as well. I feel like if they were gonna choose one, just have it be Ernie Hudson later, and just have the Burt Reynolds thing kind of like a friendship. I yeah, but I mean, there's also the fact that like, if you're gonna have him be a, a secondary mentor to him, he should have taught him stuff that was different. That too, like, yeah. They, they could have focused more on the the horse riding and stuff like that versus Burt Reynolds having taught him how to to fight and shoot a gun. Ernie Hudson could have taught him how to uh, ride or trick ride for I don't know quick getaways or something like that. Now I definitely don't know if this is true because I have no basis on this, but I wonder if Burt Reynolds committed to the movie and then they could only get him for a certain amount of time, so they had to rewrite it and that's and a possibility. Maybe get Ernie Hudson for this part. Yeah. Oh, I'm just uh, Burt Bert Reynolds. If I mean, they did, seamless. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Burt Reynolds has a history of being really easy to work with on sets. I believe. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, I am joking. I I I I, I sense the facetiousness. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if he's the most difficult person, but I'm sure he's not the easiest. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, also, I gotta say too, when they were saying so, basically, before Sibad has sex with with Molly, I think her name is. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ernie Hudson says uh, riding a horse is like being with a woman. I thought he was trying to suggest that he should have sex with the horse or something. <laughs> I thought that was going to be the joke. Sinbad would be like, what do you want me to do? <laughs> and then, you know, it wasn't Which actually... also would have been super awkward during a uh, eulogy. Yes, Sinbad as Mr. Hands. <laughs> and Suddenly then... we're watching Equus. <laughs> <laughs> And then he grabbed a stepping stool and <laughs> fucked that horse. <laughs> and then he could ride it. Uh, still, like a even woman. with that, even with that, uh, this, this still more respectable podcast than our Showgirls episode. <laughs> and by the way, I'm doing a more, a less stereotypical accent than they really do in the movie. <laughs> Thomas Jefferson. Jefferson, yeah. So this they go to they go to what Pecos Texas to to rob a bank. Yeah, they go to rob banks with the shot nuns. Right, and eh? I actually eh? said that th- they went in there and they were having none of it. Oh, we we nailed it. There, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Great job, Brendan. <laughs> Woo! We're geniuses. <laughs> we are definitely not the biggest idiots ever. Nope, the opposite of that. Yep. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so they go to rob banks basically just to get. James Coburn's attention because he has his he has his hands in the banks. Yeah, and they and then we, we get some, some from newspaper. Yes, and he was he actually was going along quite well with the uh, with their plan. He was pretty happy to be robbed by the Cherokee kid. <laughs> he was. He even holds his gun for him. They say, "Oh, don't here take the gun too, because hey, and here's the gingham apron. It's not embroidered because we didn't know you were coming, but <laughs> yes." <laughs> So, and we get the idea that he's doing this, but and, and I feel like it's glossed over, but he's doing like a Robin Hood type thing where apparently he's supposed to be giving all the stuff that he's stealing from the banks to poor people. That's that's really glossed over. It's so much so that it's in like a headline in the paper and that's it. Also, the newspaper, for an old west town, the newspaper moves fast. And takes surprisingly high quality photos. <laughs> Almost cinema-like. Yeah, uh- <laughs> they also uh they also assume a lot about how people feel about things mm-hmm. <laughs> like he's just, fuming yeah simbad robs bank mayor is fuming yeah <laughs> like did you ask him did you take the time to interview him what was the journalistic process who are your sources i mean really i don't see any footnotes this looks more like uh Opinion and not fact. I'm just going to put that out there. <laughs> That's right. And we have a higher caliber. Uh, hold our journalists to a higher standard here in uh, El Pecos, Texas. <laughs> Fake news. <laughs> so, yes, they rob a bunch of banks. Yep. And now, here's another weird shoehorn thing. They go, to, they go by some family's home. Mm-hmm. And we get like a romantic love interest, a potential love interest for Sinbad, and we like are, an RKO, <laughs> like an R- yeah, exactly, legitimately three quarters of the way through this movie. Yep, it just like I thought that was really strange that it just introduced now. Hmm. So we're in agreement then. 
Yes. Okay. Good. It was. It, it definitely felt you know tacked on or shoehorned in, as you say. Yeah, I I feel like even if they had kind of introduced her a little bit earlier in the movie, it would have been a little better. But she literally, well, she's at the beginning of the movie because that's in the future. Mm-hmm. But she literally just shows up, and it's like, uh, yeah. Because they go to this home and the family welcomes them in. However, when she yep. finds out there's a five thousand dollar reward on on Sinbad and Juan. She hits them with a frying pan mm-hmm. and says we could use and that money. Like, oh, supper turned into a hardcore match. <laughs> it's like having supper with Bob Holly. <laughs> Look up Bob Holly, kids. <laughs> um, I, I also wrote down, this might be the earliest historical claim of someone saying that they're working for the man. Yes. <laughs> as far as like <laughs> early, uh, history goes. Mm-hmm. But not not movies, obviously, because the seventies was all about that. But they get tie- Sinbad and Juan are tied up, and, and they get untied pretty easily. They, yeah, they untie <laughs> themselves pretty easily. They basically escape, and Sinbad tells her, "You know, we're doing this for a good cause. I'm going after, I'm going <laughs> going after James Coburn. I'm going to kill him." And that whole scene just felt the whole scene really just felt like tacked on to. Like I mm-hmm. don't know what the point of that part is. Yeah, no, true. Yeah, it's it's weird. It's it's almost like the studio or HBO or whoever the producer was like, we need a love interest, and they were like, uh, we're already almost done filming. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like, I don't understand why they felt the need to tack that on because um, I, I mean, I can understand him having to go to like a, a town folks' house and uh, endear himself just to show that the the people of the town actually do love him for what he's doing. But they don't need to tack on this love interest because there could have been something that they used f- Molly from the previous. That well, that's uh, that's who I thought was going to be the love interest. I even actually had this. Who does he love at this point? <laughs> that's my note. <laughs> yeah, it, it almost would have been fine without a love interest. Like, but besides, um, the woman that's introduced as one, it's not like they ever like kiss or anything. Mm. It's 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 suggested that she likes him later, but I mean. It serves no purpose. No. And yes, I I did also think it was going to be the girl who we had sex with. Other than the fact that, you know, spoilers, she's turned later towards the life of the Cherokee kid. Sure. Okay. But I mean... But even that was like, you would have need to do that if you'd done it with... If they'd done the whole love interest thing with Molly and kept carrying that forward. Yep. Yeah. So they go around, they get back into town, and uh, Sinbad actually... <laughs> well, no, he doesn't kill anyone, actually. He just shoots their, the guns out of their hand, for the most part. Mm-hmm. Uh, even that guy in the bar, I'm pretty sure they didn't kill him. Yeah. The guy that tries to kill them. So <laughs> he says, I'm going to let everyone know I'm going to have a showdown with The Undertaker at yeah. WrestleMania 12. And, he, again, he is he is not strong enough to beat the streak. Nope. And they're going to beat no. on Main Street. Would they have had streets... Around that time, yeah. around that area. Yeah, I mean they wouldn't have paved, maybe not paved roads, but <laughs> I just you know, like, they would have identified it as Main Street. Uh, I like how the, the street they came up with was just like eh, Main Street. <laughs> Every city has one. I know it's just so generic. <laughs> so yeah, they meet on Main Street, and this is where we cut back to the funeral finally. Yeah, <laughs> the story is the story is over for as far as Juan Cortina is concerned because. <laughs> Bonner and the gang bust in and say, listen, bury him now. Yeah, we're taking him. It's happening now. Mm-hmm. But the Undertaker has to tell his story first. Yes. And Just in case you hadn't figured it out. The twist! That I saw less than 20 minutes into the movie. I will admit I didn't. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. Go ahead. What is the twist? Well, the, the twist is that um, the Undertaker is <sighs> Jedediah. He's the Cherokee kid's brother who was, yeah, who was, was fake shot at the beginning of the movie. So he got someone to spread the rumor that the undertaker killed him. Well, because he had to, he he says that he got into some trouble with the law a while back. So he kind of had to disappear. So he spread the rumor that he was killed by this undertaker chap. And, uh, which really begs the question to me, does that make Sinbad Kane? (laughs) That's gotta be Simbad. <laughs> yes. But yeah, I, I was like, oh, 
<laughs> I, I knew it too, just to, in case you hadn't missed it or, or figured it out on your own. Sinbad's brother is the Undertaker. <laughs> right. Now, I gotta say though, because they, they, they square off for the, sh- for the showdown. I do like the bit in the showdown here where Sinbad shoots through the furs and then checks the level as to, at to where the bullet stopped and wears the furs like a bulletproof vest. <laughs> oh, yeah, during the big shootout, yes. I thought that was a pretty fun uh, little smart bit of business, I thought. But during the part where un- The Undertaker and Sinbad are going to shoot each other again, because they go back to this, yeah. Um, he, I feel like The Undertaker takes a real risk. <laughs> <laughs> Because he says... Some, he goes on the top ropes? He, yeah, walk, he goes for old school. like old school? Yeah, he yeah. goes for the dive to the outside. No, yeah. he's he says, like, some very... He says something that Sinbad heard when they were kids. But <laughs> he's lucky that he, like, remembered that. Do well, you know? it may have been something that his mo- their mother often said to them. But then their, mo- but their mother died when they were very young. Right, but he was he was still clearly old enough to remember uh, all the stuff that had been you know said to him about uh about his dad stuff that his mother would have imparted on him and what was the line it was something like don't don't mistake uh stupidity for bravery or something right yes i i just think it would have been smarter to be to like get really close and be like hey it's me jedediah (laughs) i i did like the uh the the fun little nod there where he said now it's your turn to die yes because, because he had died. died. Yeah, yeah, he had pretended to die years ago. <laughs> right. Now it was Sinbad's turn to to pretend to die. So, yeah, I just wrote it was, <laughs> I just wrote he should have been like, "Bro, it's me. Let's fake it and then kill all these guys." Here's something <laughs> I couldn't so, possibly but know. But the, the problem was is that the audience was too close. You can't call a spot like that on the fly when the audience can hear it. <laughs> Okay. You know, you you have to work it out between you you and the other guy and the ref so that that you can call the spot without you know cluing the marks in on, as to what's going on in the ring. So don't do what Triple H did this past Friday when he said, "Hey, you want to stay in this or keep going?" Yeah, <laughs> or any John Cena match ever. <laughs> to be fair, in that match, Triple H was the one calling the spots. That yes. I the only one that I heard. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, but, uh, I actually labeled this chapter of the movie, uh, the gunfight at the pretty all right corral. <laughs> it reminded me, it was like magnificent seven levels of de- character deaths. Yes. <laughs> because Ernie Hudson gets killed here. Yes. And I didn't see that coming. Not only did I not see it coming, but I'm like, okay, so you killed both his mentors. Like, again, you just made that one mentor. It would have been, it would have meant a lot more. Which goes, which gives kind of gives credence to your theory that there's a possibility that that should have been Burt Reynolds, but they, well, you know, there may have been scheduling conflicts, or he became difficult to deal with. If we could get Sinbad on this show, that would be. I well, you know uh, what? If, if he ever gets back to my DM, I'll I'll mention it. Yeah, because I want yeah. I want to like to ask him about that theory. Yeah. Get that clarified. I have a lot of questions. We we could talk to him about House Gust and what it was like (laughs) to work with Phil Hartman. I have a lot of questions about First Kid. (laughs) (laughs) Namely, what is it? I haven't seen it. (laughs) But yeah. Yes, his his mentors are dead. A lot of other folks are dead. Bonner uh, Bonner gets killed. By The Undertaker. Yes. Yeah. And Sinbad finally tracks down James Coburn. Yep. Spares his life because he's not worth a bullet. But then James Coburn, as any villain, decides yes. to attack, decides to, uh, this is a very antiquated term, but it, it goes with wrestling. He decides to Pearl Harbor him. Yes. And Sinbad turns around and shoots him dead. Boom, James Coburn, RIP in this movie and also real life. Mm-hmm. I don't know. And like, Ernie Hudson, why why kill him off? <laughs> Well, I like how he says that you you weren't worth the bullet and then shoots him. So he clearly was worth the bullet. Well, I think the only reason he shot him was because he was about to shoot him. He was about to kill him. Right. So, I mean, I get that. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, we get a little wrap up with Miss Abby joining them, which, again, not necessary. Just have the other girl from earlier join them or something. Right. It's so weird. That part is so strange, and I didn't even think about that aspect of it 
until and also, you I'm it pretty, up. I'm pretty sure that she was super glad that uh, Juan told the story about how he nailed some other chick like a day before he met her. <laughs> and then Sinbad. At, at, at a supposed funeral in church. <laughs> Sinbad, fuck this girl. She yeah. looked. Oh, and she liked it rough. <laughs> she's, she's, there were goats and chickens. <laughs> she looked like you, although much prettier. <laughs> Uh, yes, and then um, did you notice one of the one of the credits uh, toward towards the end? Did you watch any of the credits? I uh, I didn't watch the whole. I just watched some of the cast uh, as it came up, and I was like, okay, that's done. And um, yeah, I enjoyed it more than I probably should have, but at, still. At the end of the film, it said, uh, "This film is dedicated to the unsung heroes of the American West, the cowboys of color." Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Just want to point that out. I thought that was interesting. Uh, yeah. That was the Cherokee Kid. Rob Hooper, you didn't give us something too painful to watch. No, that was it was good. We had a had a good time. I was uh, I was I was worried. <laughs> it was uh, it was a lot easier to watch than some of the other movies that we've covered on this show. Yes, <laughs> it's d- nowhere near the uh, the the bottom <laughs> echelon. It's no uh, demons of Ludlow. I would honest, no, <laughs> I would honestly say it might be near the top for this year, like since Probably. August. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely one of the more watchable ones. Um, it's super silly, and there's obviously some issues with it, as we talked about the love interest thing and the double mentors. But <laughs> I mean, yeah, but I mean that's I mean that's a script logistical thing. I mean, as far as the the acting goes and. And the story, it was, you know, good. I mean, the, 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 it had a flow to it. it you know, the, the plot carried uh, well, uh, you know, unlike some other movies that we've... Okay, ben and Arthur. <clears throat> yep. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that like I said, that was the Cherokee Kid from Robert Hooper. Next week will be something else. We don't know what it's going to be. We're going to find out nope. Tuesday. What Were They Thinking is brought to you by HostGator. HostGator is a leading provider of shared, reseller, VPS, and dedicated hosting solutions. Award-winning support is available 24-7, 365 days a year via phone, email, and live chat. Discover why over 9 million websites trust HostGator. Use the coupon code SCHLUCK for 25% off your first purchase. That's SCHLUCK, S-C-H-L-O-C-K, for 25% off your first purchase. What Were They Thinking is brought to you today by GameItAll.com. Whether it's video game news, the latest in music, or movie reviews, GameItAll.com is your one-stop shop for all nerdy talk. (sighs) I have a question. What's that, little hulkster? Hulk Hogan? That's right, brother. I mean, someone who sounds like Hulk Hogan, but uh, copyright-wise is not technically Hulk Hogan. That's right. Um, sure. Why not? Don't internet search me. Okay, my mom doesn't let me use Google anymore anyway. That's probably for the best, little hoaxer. Wait a second. Maybe you can help me. I'll do what I can. Where I'm looking for all the wrestling news, rumors, and all the results, and I can't find them anywhere. Well, let me tell you something, little hoaxer. If you need your fix for internet, wrestling rumors, and results, and all the inside information, you're going to need to go to WrestlingNewsWorld.com. If you're not there, you're not anywhere, brother. Wow, thanks, kind of Hulk Hogan. Sure thing, little hoaxer. Remember, say your prayers, eat your vitamins, and go to school and all that other stuff, because I'm not really Hulk Hogan, so I don't know what he'd want to say. WrestlingNewsWorld.com What were they You know this this movie. Um, I, I guess suppose we should lead in. Are we going to go with the uh, low haiku or the don't take our word for it? Uh, I believe we're going to get poetic. All right. Well, we're going to go into the the low haiku uh, after this. Uh, Garrison Keeler will we'll be back to uh, endure us with the life and times uh, of the Prairie Home Companion. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Get ready. Get your Lake Wobegon hats out. I have my cider and my molasses cookie. Excellent. Do you, do you have your oh, yes. low haiku? Yes. 
sorry, I was, I was, uh, I had two oatmeal raisin cookies today, so I'm a little wired. Oh, that's, that's, uh, that's definitely, uh, something to, to set you on edge for sure. Don't you know? Here we go. Okay. Listeners like us? This is not awful at all. Multiple mentors. Okay. Very good. Very good. <clears throat> Sinbad, gunslinger. Once upon a time, in West. Not that bad at all. Snap, 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 snap. <laughs> Very good. I don't know how you don't know how to snap. Well, you know. I don't, I don't know. You would story. be dead in the Old West. Just dead. Nathan, what do we always say on this show? Well, we say. Don't take a word for us. Yeah, that's right. Don't take our word for it because this movie has a 60% audience score. And its critic score is uh, two lines. Because it's not applicable because they don't have a critic score for it, apparently. It makes sense. It was on, It was a TV movie from like yeah. 12 years ago. <laughs> but yeah, 60% and, audience uh, there rating. Are, <laughs> there are no critic reviews yet for the Cherokee Kid. Keep checking Rotten Tomatoes for updates. <laughs> and there are no featured audience reviews yet. I like your apparently... optimistic tone. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what it says. Keep checking for updates. You know, one of these days. But there are some there are some audience reviews, not featured ones, but there are some audience ones. Yep. And um, uh, some of the more positive ones from Matthew M. Uh, a good Western comedy starring Sinbad. There are some funny moments, especially how Sinbad interacts with people and how he tries to make excuses or get out of situations he does. <laughs> I think he means not want to be in. Mm-hmm. Overall, a great cast and a fun movie to watch. Can I say something about that review? Because I wrote that one down mm-hmm. too. Yeah, I feel like the guy, <laughs> that guy, could have not even watched the movie and still wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> that Possibly. is like prototypical Sinbad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> this one's from John R. Uh, silly. I almost want to say, quote unquote, poor comedy, but entertaining nonetheless. For some reason, features an actor... Oh, for some reason. That's not that's the part of the sentence. Features an actor who I really enjoy now, Walton Goggins. One of his earlier films. Quaint, but a couple of pretty extreme scenes of violence, in parentheses, bladed weapons. <laughs> bladed okay. weapons? Well, the the, uh, the the shopkeeper, or the fur trader, rather, gets uh, a knife to the chest. Okay, that's true. I like how he mm. says it. He has to... Uh, Spe- specify there are some bladed weapons guys <laughs> would well, you know that actually um uh a lot of times in in a in a in fights that people will f- find the uh, the prospect of a knife more threatening than a gun what because uh because it's more it's a more painful way to die oh like are you talking about people in general yeah i mean yeah oh i can see that but I'd be more afraid of a gun just because it's so sudden. Yeah. It's a lot easier to... Uh, I feel like it'd be a lot easier for someone to shoot you than try to stab you. No, it depends on who's handling the gun. That's true. Um, Seto C Ooh. has a real brief um, okay. one, and it's slightly uh, misspelled as well. <laughs> Learn, dot, dot, dot. Steal, dot, dot, dot. Revenge. Is it, let me guess it's spelled revenge yes i knew it <laughs> r-e-v-a-n-g-e perfect revenge. perfect spelling uh this one is from julie a she says definitely and underrated movie i honestly don't remember much of this movie i've been searching for it for about 10 years that is a harrowing tale by the way <laughs> <laughs> I mainly I mainly remember Sinbad had both of my parents and myself laughing our heads off throughout the entire movie. A difficult feat considering how different our views on comedy are. Also, Sinbad, bringing families together. Also, I've been searching for it for ten years. Well, son, everyone's got their windmill, my friend. I hope that was like at the beginning of every day. She was like, all right, Googling Cherokee Kid. Damn it. <laughs> Well, back to work. Back to work, I go. <laughs> Check it again in 10 hours. 
Yeah. I'm gonna, we got one from Kurt S. And this guy, he gave it three and a half stars. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to read this the way it sounds like it should be read. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. Join the Cherokee Kid and Otter Bob as they make their way through the Wild West on the kid's hunt for revenge. A turkey gets killed, the kid tries to shoot some bottles, and a virginity is taken. Probably the one and only good movie that Sinbad was in. Give it a watch. It's worth the time. (laughs) A virginity is taken. (laughs) And they make their way through the West. (laughs) Through the Wild West. Oh, the last one I want to read here proves that th- proves that if you leave a word out by mistake, it really changes the meaning of what you're trying to say. <laughs> okay. All right. Sim, it's from Eugene D. Sinbad. Right. Sinbad did a great job on this movie as James Coburn and Burt Reynolds. <laughs> <laughs> so Sinbad played Burt Reynolds and James Coburn in this movie. <laughs> He Eddie murphy this movie. I don't know if you're aware. <laughs> oh, my he God. Was like, he was like, fuck it. If Eddie Murphy can do it, I can't do it. That's right. So, I mean, sorry for knocking Burt Reynolds. I wasn't aware you, you were in this That movie. it was actually Sinbad. Yeah. <laughs> oh, eventually we'll come to that seat kind of technology. <laughs> Oh, that was Cherokee Kid. That was those were their reviews. Oh, that was low high. Sorry, I got I got one more review. Oh, yes. I've got to read this yes, one. Hit us with it. This is from Krista M. Okay, <clears throat> four stars. <clears throat> are, you, are you ready? I'm ready. It's a pretty in depth dissection of the, this movie <laughs> and uh, the you know the intricate um, you know uh, social statements and uh, plot holes uh, that are explored throughout. Okay. Um, so if you're ready, mm-hmm. <clears throat> I love this movie. Perfect. That's a review. <laughs> oh, is that New York Times? <laughs> no, because there's no critic reviews, remember? It's independent New York Times review. <laughs> Failing independent New York Times. Oh. Get out of here, Mr. President. <laughs> so, that was that. We don't... Yeah. We can't really give a clue because we don't know what's coming, so... Nope. We'll just say, uh, tune it, tune into our Twitter page. It'll also be on the YouTube page as well. Um, to hear our next draw and see what movie gets, uh, gets drawn out of the hat. Hope it's something mm-hmm. good. I hope so too. But you know, it probably won't be. <laughs> probably won't be. No. <laughs> uh, we should, uh, plug though. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, just give me one second. Okay. My friend in here. Oh, he's here. God. Yeah. You know, there's no need to be like that. Yeah, well. We pay you. Don't... Brendan, I'm, I'm being nice to you. Yeah. Well, I know, I know the venom that lies beneath your soul. Now, I'm I'm being civil. You can be civil as well. All right, Montrose. What would you like to plug, sir? Well, thank you, good sir. Hello, it's your good friend Montrose Munkington the Third here. I just like to stop by here. This these chaps let me have some time on their podcast to to promote my YouTube channel Montrose Munkington TV, as well as my Facebook page Montrose Munkington the Third Esquire and Friends. And uh, if you take a look at my Facebook page, you'll see I got so, I've met some new friends uh, this past uh, week or so uh, up in Moncton, where I I got to. Uh, Witness um, Tyler Bate and Pete Dunn wrestling. My goodness, it was excellent to see uh, the UK champion uh, and Tyler Bate, the first UK champion, really plying their craft in in a in an independent setting. Um, it was a, a fun time was had by all, and there are videos there of myself and uh, uh, Mr. Matthew Pettifer. Unfortunately, uh, there's there's no interview with uh, with Pete Dunne and uh, or Tyler Bate uh, as they are under um, you know a contract with the WWE. Uh, they have a lot of uh, strict restrictions. As on what they can do as far as interviews and and interactions on the YouTubes, uh, but yes, uh, do check about uh, Montrose Monkington the Third Esquire and Friends, Montrose Monkington TV. You may also follow me on the your Twitter devices uh, at Montrose the Third. That's the number three R D. Uh, I am on Twitter. Thank you. More later. There you have it. Mm-hmm. And 
you can also follow us on Twitter, this podcast, at WWTT Podcast. You can also follow us on Instagram at the same same thing, WWTT Podcast. We're on Facebook. What were they thinking? We also have a What Were They Thinking interactive group where you can, uh, you know, shoot the shit, yell at us. Yep. Send us some questions if you want us to answer them on our mini-sodes. Yeah. And if you have an idea for a movie, drop it. Like, it's it's not always listener's choice, but, I mean, we... We take advo- We take, yes, we take suggestions. Yeah. We'll look into it. We'll put it on a put it on a list. Check it twice. Check it twice. Maybe once. <laughs> yeah. If it's appropriate or fits the, the tone of this here program. And mm. yeah, and you can uh, also we're on all the podcatchers, obviously. Uh Podbean, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, uh YouTube actually as well. And uh I think that's I think that's it. Well, what other uh, platforms are we on, Nathan? Well, we're on, you know, uh, Pod Kit Knife, mm-hmm. the human sent iPod. Uh, there is the also Network. on po- Podify. Um, the Al Jazeera Network, yes. Um, ABC Spark, mm-hmm. uh, but not Disney. not Disney. And uh, I believe HBO Premium. Yes. And uh, did I say the Teddy Roxman Appreciation no, you, Society? You did not. I did not. Well, them as well. <laughs> okay, perfect. You can record our podcast and put it in the back of your Teddy Ruxpin and Teddy Ruxpin will then, you know, say our podcast for you. Also on Twitter, uh, don't don't forget to mention our dirty mouths are open, so slide right in. <laughs> I'm really starting to regret giving you that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, never not funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's us. <laughs> so, having said that, mm-hmm. I guess uh, I guess I just have a question. Okay, well, you go right ahead with your question then, my friend. Well, I mean... Nathan, you know what? What's that? This was a... This was not a movie that sucked. Yeah, it did, it did, it did not suck at all. Nowhere near as much as I, I figured it was going to. But, I mean, in a movie with some writing issues... Mm-hmm. Uh, including a last-minute love interest. Right. Multiple mentors for no reason secondary on on both aspects secondary love interests and secondary mentors right Mm -hmm. Uh, i just i guess i should ask who are you asking me or robert uh, i'm asking robert okay i'm contractually obligated to ask this Mm -hmm. what were you thinking that i'm the biggest idiot ever (laughs) It's time, let's check our cue, baby Pair it with a couple brews, baby We love your movies We love the bad ones, too So we watch them all and pass their lessons on to you Oh, yeah Everything I learned from movies Helps to make life a little bit groovy With a one last plot holes and gratuitous boobies It's time to get busy With your friend Steven Izzy At eilfm.podbean.com Hi, I'm Ellen and I'm scared we exist in the Matrix I'm Jaslyn and I'm bad at ad-libbing and you're listening to High, High Expectations, Expectations, the promo. For our international listeners, you can appreciate our cute New Zealand accents. For our local listeners, you might bump into us in the street three times in the same hour. Our podcast is about pop culture, sexuality, relationships, interesting hobbies, banter and ragging on each other. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Pocket Casts, Podcast Addict, or anywhere you might like to find podcasts. Yay, please subscribe. Goodbye. Hey, do you like movies? Hey, do you like podcasts? If you do, then come on down and listen to the Home Video Hustle podcast, homie. Hustle, hustle. Every Friday, we talk about whatever movie PJ picks out the bag. What does that mean? Well, every Wednesday on our YouTube page, I pick a bunch of movies at random. Sometimes there's a theme to it, sometimes not. PJ picks the movie out, and guess what? 
We watch it on Friday. We talk about it for about maybe an hour, hour and a half, whatever we feel like doing. Might give you something good to watch, baby. Come on down every Friday. So come get your hustle on with Home Video Hustle. You can find the show on any podcatcher app, or you can come down to homevideohustle.popping.com. All of them in one place for you. So you can go ahead and binge it like it's Netflix. We ain't the defenders. Uh, but I like to think we a little bit better than that. <laughs> come out at your boys, man. Come chill with us. Peace. Peace. happy to have you with us this evening and want you to enjoy every minute of your stay here. Listen to me. Please listen. If you don't, if you won't, if you fail to understand, then the same incredible terror that's menacing me will strike at you! Are you ready to enter the sci-fi double feature drive-in? Every month we hold a special double feature with a very interesting theme thought up by your host, the conspiracy-loving Elisa, and yours truly, Jarrett the Kaiju Man Wegelin. We discuss giant monsters, little monsters, genetic abominations, robots gone awry, aliens coming to Earth, cryptids, and anything in between. So join us at the sci-fi double feature drive-in podcast every first and third Thursday of the month. And don't forget to stop by our snack bar first.